Now before WordPress 1.8, creating widgets was a bit of a hack job. You had to use lots of confusing functions and the code didn't seem to flow well together. But now that's not an issue anymore because we can use object-oriented principles to create our widgets. So let's get started with that. I'm going to create a class and this class name will be whatever our plugin name is. I'm going to call it Messenger. Now one thing I want you to be careful of though is this name is somewhat generalized and your name for a plugin cannot be the same as somebody else's name for a plugin. So that's why often you'll see people do something like their initials or give it some kind of prefix. For now, this is a test plugin, so we can keep it generalized. Now, we want to take advantage of the built-in widget class. So in order to inherit the methods and the properties from that class, we need to make sure that we extend it. So we'll say extends WP widget. Now by doing this, we have access to a handful of methods. So let's get started with some of our functions. We're gonna be working with PHP 5. So we can create a constructor method, and I'm going to assume that you have a modest level understanding of PHP classes, but the constructor method is a method that will run immediately when this class is instantiated. So if I echoed out hello, and then we instantiated this class, this function would immediately run, and you would see hello world on the page. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. And the next method we're going to create is Form. This is going to be equal to, and if I go back to widgets, right here, what you see here, your form. So in this case, we have a title input. Here we have a title, number of posts. Each of these are added via the form method. Next, we have the widget method. Now, this method will be responsible for what is displayed on the page. This would be responsible for echoing out the unordered list or displaying the links or creating the calendar. Now, a couple things here is let's make sure it's a best practice to focus on encapsulation. So let's make sure that we make these public by default. Now, these will default to public, but it's still a best practice to declare them as so. And the last step is we've created our base structure. So if you want, you could copy this and save it to your snippets program so that you don't have to type this every time. But we also want to add a new action. And this action is going to be the widgets init. Now, when the widgets section is initialized, we want to make sure that we add this class. So I'm going to call a function that will take care of that. If you're working in PHP 5.3, you can pass an anonymous function. However, if you're creating a plugin that will specifically be used by others who may not have PHP 5.3, you would use a named function. So we use an anonymous function in the previous chapter. This time, let's use a named function, and I'll call it JW Register Messenger. So we'll create that method now. And I'm going to call a WordPress function called register widget. And what is the name of the widget that we're registering? This messenger class. Now, I'm going to go into my constructor function and let's begin setting up our parameters. So first, I will create a variable called params and that's going to be equal to an array. And here's where we can set some base configuration options. The first one is going to be what is the description? Now the description is going to be this bit of text that you see right here underneath each widget. And we'll call this display messages to readers. Very, very simple. The next one is going to be what is the name of the widget or what do you see right here? And we'll call this name messenger. Now, whenever we create our own constructor method and we are extending a parent class, it's going to override that parent class's constructor method. But we don't want that. We still want to bring that in. So I'm going to call that right now. And we can reference the parent class by typing parent and then make sure that we call its constructor function. Now, it's going to require two parameters as designated by the WP widget class. The first one is going to be an ID. So we'll give that messenger. The next one is going to be the name of it, but we're already declaring the name right here. So I'm going to leave that blank. And the third parameter is going to be for the options. So I'm going to call that params, or you could rename this to options. So let's save that. And now I'm going to come back and let's try installing the plugin. I will click activate. And now if I go to widgets, sure enough, you'll see messenger. It says our description and our heading. If I were to drag that in now, nothing's really going to happen. So let's view this on the page. And sure enough, you're not seeing anything because we haven't added any functionality yet. We've just created the widget itself. So in the next lesson, we're going to create the form which contains the inputs that you see right here.